Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome, Soul Family. May I say, thank Terrence McKenna. Find the others. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck we use in here. And it's going to do the four card read. And think of this kind of a checkup, November 8th. You know, it's kind of a grunt energy, but oh, there's so much going on. It's crazy. Mars now, Mercury now. Uh, Scorpio, uh, Venus, <laughs> I have four planets in Sag, Venus all over me. This morning, right before I started, I was an astrologer too, so I, I'm trying to get ahead of, uh, I feel like I've been behind, like it's just, I barely, just feel almost overwhelmed, you know, someone was asking me about astro cartography, I said, you know, I, I, my brain is only, is limited, uh, but Venus is going to station direct at 28 degrees Aquarius, exactly i mean exactly on my progress sign <laughs> uh, i just kind of think that's going to be a really good time for me so i think we're looking at i kind of see that with the readings you know i feel like a, a, a lot of what's going on is uh the lion's gate lion's gate lion's gate i know it was august doesn't matter um and another thing is that uh, saturn you're in a square the breaking up and of the old and bringing in the new um there's going to be a constant series of like mental breakthroughs you know physical breakdowns mental breakdowns uh with uranus coming in uh, there's going to be stuff coming out of left field and a lot of times with uranus a higher mind particularly if you're on a spiritual path you know that can be fantastic insights downloads you know uh, realizations of any kinds of visions uh, upgrades how you want to look at it so um it's it's an amazing time to be in i i i felt the energy getting kind of lighter and lighter it's tough i mean i got my uh also my progress moon now has moved into scorpio um so when i do have uh pluto happens to be um <laughs> yeah uh posing my moon natal moon um so um i think this whole you know it's gonna be like a crib from like no end of november until uh, really like I think the beginning of March times it clears its post shadow Venus now that's a long time for Venus to be in one sign so I mean I'm thinking like Capricorn wherever that is in your chart um, you know it's a fifth house for me it's where Saturn is for me I been a big theme for me um, that um, but prepare for that area of your life why it's so important to know your rising sign this really is about where the house is, I think, um, is going to get this amazing energy. It's from like 11 degrees, 28 degrees cap of Venus, which, I, you know, it's, uh, it's going to do really good good in Capricorn. You know, it's focused, it's, it's love, uh, it's committed, it's uh, strong, it has a, you know, uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, Capricorn, Venus kind of people, you know, they don't like, like kind of, after a year, yeah, the romance phase might wear off, but they're going to hang in there. They're still going to love you like they did at the beginning. Ten years, still going to love you. Um, that kind of energy. But in it, so it's bringing that energy to ourselves, to our self-esteem, to our work, to our relationships in every way, and how we relate to other people. Um, so I just think it's going to be, a, it's going to give a really wonderful flavor, seriously, to the winter here. And this is, I think this is personal energy so this is where we got the mercury and the mars i keep saying it's it, it ain't they, it ain't there playing around guys this is big energy in right now we're all setting these uh, huge patterns for 20 30 years of our lives coming up uh, right now since it's lion's gate you know and if things haven't manifested they're damn well on the way on the astral train you know just to have, who knows when they'll get here um, but i think it's this certainly in this time frame um, it's all kind of auspicious energy for, um, you know, everything from personal growth, um, your work life, your love life, you know, anything you want to work on. And we'll probably feel like doing it, you know, and because also uh, Capricorn, neither to Mars and Venus, it brings a, a lot of uh, energy and strength, and sustenance, you know, people that are, have stamina, you know, in general. So let's look at where we're at now. Look at that, man. <laughs> the emperor. This is where we're coming in in terms of spirituality and manifestation, where our mind is at, where our heart is at, where our soul connections are at right now. 
is this emperor energy of Aries. I keep thinking Caroline's up there in Aries. Uh, and, you know, um, you also got Eris there, um, square and Pluto still. It's kind of the counter theme to the um, really po most powerful theme, I think, of the whole year. Uh, you're in a Saturn going on. Um, but, boy, this is feeling really strong. You can kind of look at this card. It's a little proud. as, as nose kind of up in the air. You know, when you're in this energy, I'll tell you what, I mean, it, it's not particularly a love relationship reading, but uh, it, it is too, because that, that's me. And I do read the Fool uh, in this reading heavily, and I love having that with the Emperor. That's sweet. Okay, so overall energy of the Fool. Um, you, you know, you ain't going to settle. You ain't going to settle. And I think you go ahead and just take that and say, well, I think what this is saying here too you ain't gonna settle for any you, you know all these people walking off their mcdonald's jobs and whatnot you that's definitely this energy and it's like you ain't going back to a job like that you ain't gonna settle on a career you're not gonna settle on just surviving you know i think that's kind of what this is it's like not settling on surviving but wanting to thrive you know the emperor thrives you know once you're the emperor you're beyond this level of having to you know, dig your way through the dirt to barely scrape a living every day. Um, and I think you could say, you, are you not thriving if you're the emperor? But now, the overall energy, fool. I mean, I love this. It's like this, this is major arcana, both is major arcana, but with the emperor, it speaks to us. I think channeling that part of ourselves could literally be Aries, my eighth house. Very strong for me, even though I have no planets there. Mm-hmm. It gives a lot of strength to my Mars, I think, that's in Sagittarius, which is kind of shaky so on its own. Um, but Aries energy, you know, it's cardinal energy. You know what you want. You know where you're going. You probably know how to get there, how you're going to get there. You might be there. I mean, if you're the emperor, you might be there. But overall energy outside is the fool and a fool's not like the tower it's not going to happen to us this is a choice we have to make now imagine though an emperor chooses to be the fool why on earth would emperor you think emperor would do what would be that be like well, i'm going to be invade like three other empires at the same time and as you know military leaders and advisors be telling me, you're crazy you're being a fool so he wouldn't do that it's love <laughs> God said, no, it's not a love reading. That's where the emperor would be the fool. And the emperor, like the king, is nobody going to get to the emperor. Good luck. You know, he's guarded by guards, you know. And the, but in terms of love, you can get to him, huh? Um, but it's like, I get the feeling, too, this is kind of a solid energy. It's a little independent, you know, and strong. And um, But there's something kind of brewing underneath. We're just feeling like, you know, you might just bust a move, you know, and surprise everybody. Also, the emperor's going to act a certain way, you know. Uh, I don't even want to go into the, I keep hearing emperor's, uh, emperor's not wearing any clothes. Emperor's uh, not wearing any clothes. The emperor's new clothes uh, comes on <laughs> too, but, um, so too, I get the feeling like whatever this is about, there's something brewing, it's coming, and it's going to be like a surprise to people who know you maybe maybe to yourself you're going to surprise yourself now this is in the blocking position here so that's interesting nine of pentacles it's a wonderful card in itself you can look at it as blocking as being as if it's reversed energy of the nine of pentacles well you would think that uh this could be if, if the full energy is what's looming out there and you want to take this leap, you know, I kind of am a Sagittarius. So uh, naturally, I see this as a good thing. You're a Taurus. You're like, fuck, oh, no, you crazy. No, no, no. This the, we're the emperor. We ain't going to be leaping nowhere. You know, we're going to be eating really well, though. And, um, you know, it's all going to be good. But now the energy that's blocking is the Nine of Pentacles. Which is the happy bachelor, huh? So this is what's blocking you. So maybe you're an emperor that doesn't have an empress. And it's male or female. But it does imply here that if you're the emperor, 
again, they're very strong. You're not settling. It's my way or the highway. Uh, but also, it's masculine, so you could be kind of looking. Could be kind of looking, you know. The Empress is more, you know, you're going to go to the Empress. You know, you don't see the Empress. That's the Empress ain't that's selling it, baby. <laughs> she don't need to sell. Emperor might go there and take a look around and see what he likes, you know. Yeah. So maybe you're not so happy being this bachelor. And this is the stable bachelor, you know. Uh, you know, someone that's emotionally and uh, materially and everything completely stable. But maybe it's not enough. No, look at this. Holy shit. Think about this being the nine of uh, pentacles reversed. And now this is your advice from spirit, guys. The seven of pentacles. Wow. Um, this is kind of one of those in-your-face readings. So this is all about reciprocation normally, but here this is about just assessing what the work that we've put in and what we have, our crop, assessing what we have here. And it's it really, I love this card. I think it really captures the spirit of the seven of pentacles. So, you know, if you knew nothing about tarot, just kind of looked at that and just sort of thought, what's that about? You kind of get the idea, you know. Um, Wow. He doesn't really look happy about it, honestly. And I know I said he, but it's he or she, you know. Personal reading was start looking at these as uh, people in your lives uh, with a sex, but in general, you know. Um, I think I'm kind of just thinking, because I know it's kind of specific, but I kind of think it like that. You know, you do have a bunch of coins here, so this could also be a, a reading about Venus, also about the job, particularly if you love your job, doing something you love. Um, could be the same kind of energy, like you're not really satisfied and you're looking at it, and Spirit is kind of saying, this is the advice from Spirit, so the advice is to really look at it, maybe with a notebook, and this is kind of nuts and bolts, like uh, plus and, and minus, um, and make sure that... Um, it's also bringing, you know, the emperor wants stability. This full energy is coming in, and it's like this feeling. It's probably some transit, guys, that you have, you know. Uh, you had Uranus. I got Uranus opposite Venus. Could be uh, square Venus. Uh, Uranus could do that. Uh, there's a lot of different things. Just, you know, Mars could come around and, and uh, just transit and hit your Venus and uh, have that kind of impact a little quickie of this uh, type of energy. Um, and... Um, you know, naturally, you would think the emperor's going to resist his foolish impulses. Huh? Let's see. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> We're going to decide to go for this. And I'm going to tell you, man, holy shit, now, look. This is like, uh, somebody said uh, it's going to be like a slingshot effect. And not everybody's, not everybody, a lot of direct energy now. But it takes a minute, and it's still not, if you look at on the Athema, Sky I do every day, they're not moving real fast. Not like Jupiter, as it goes into Pisces, it's, like, it's going to be like one degree every four days, just cranking through. Um, but here, look, the fool, this emperor thinks about it really hard, and, and this is, I think, really thinking about it. You're really looking at everything practically, no bullshit, maturely, like an emperor would, realistically, and then decides just to fucking go for it. Now, the weather, it literally could be either way. It could be a job, a career, a son, anything you love. And, um, some, you know, like maybe you're retired, you don't have a job. Maybe you're retired, you're single. This would be a passion that you have. And it kind of seems foolish. Any, whatever this is, uh, the job, the lover, the passion that you have, or a hobby, or a calling, calling, spiritual calling. You know, when you talk about this to people, whenever the fool's involved, Unless they're really good friends, unless they're also high vibing spiritual people, they're usually like, oh, it's kind of stupid, it's kind of risky. What? Um, are you okay? What's going on? Um, and they don't get it. But you know what? If you're the emperor and then you're the eight of wands, you don't give a fuck. You're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. I love it, guys. Thank you. Give me like, uh, thumbs up. Um, if, and if you can think of anywhere to share this, you know. Uh, any social platform, um, please do appreciate it and appreciate everybody subscribing. Thank you guys.